This is an argument that I like to call, there are a lot of other people who are better, so why should I do it? Or I don't need to do it because somebody else is going to do it. I'm going to tell you what one of my mentors in college used to always tell us. If not you, who? If not now, when? Shout out to Mr. Solomon. People, and I used to make this argument, I used to think this too. There are some very competent martial artists out there. A lot of people, at least first degree black belt, second degree black belt, or maybe higher. They're qualified to teach, but they don't think they need to teach or they don't want to teach because there's so many other people out there who are masters or grandmasters who are a lot more talented than them. And they feel like I shouldn't teach. I'm going to leave it to the people who I know are the best so we can have the best teachers out there. Which is understandable and honorable. And again, I, like I said, I used to think like that. Or they feel like, you know, I'm already physically broken up. I can't do the techniques like I used to. So I'm not going to go teach. I'm going to leave that to the people who are in the best physical shape possible who can still do all those super duper champion level things. So I'm not going to go teach. I'm going to leave that for them. But this is the thing. Your grandmasters, your masters, and your champions, they can't do everything. They're not God. There's not enough of them to go around to really make sure that everyone who truly needs martial arts lessons the most is going to get it. You're not going to, the people who need the help the most are not going to be able to get it if you are able to teach and you don't want to teach. Now, a lot of people may not think it's a big deal, but I think that traditional martial arts are really in danger of being swept under the rug going out of the style, being just erased in the United States because people are going to want to do what they see on TV. In the U.S., excuse me, what do we see? We see boxing and we see MMA. We really don't even see wrestling that much unless it's college wrestling and you got ESPN. I don't see people sitting around on Sunday afternoon watching wrestling matches. Now, do I have anything against MMA or do I have anything against boxing? Of course not. Absolutely not. I think those are great things. I think those are great formats. But there are people who could definitely benefit from some martial arts lessons who may not want to be in that type of a competitive format with that type of contact. And I can tell you have, as somebody who's done a little bit of boxing before, who's done some other combat sports, and who's been in traditional environments before, I know for a fact you can, believe it or not, you can learn how to fight without having to go full contact all the time. In fact, you could be a totally uncoordinated, non-combative person, and you get in with a good traditional martial arts teacher. Well, you know what? Even a not so good traditional martial arts teacher, you learn how to do those moves. You're going to be able to protect yourself from the people who are most likely to pick on you. But a lot of people these days, they just they don't want to teach it. They think that if you're not a 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th degree, you shouldn't be doing it. And by being that way, a lot of people are not going to be able to get the lessons. Everybody cannot afford to go to a storefront school and learn. Everybody cannot be is not going to the Olympics, so they cannot afford to take or really shouldn't try to take lessons from a former Olympian in order for them to just learn how to defend themselves. We're talking about this, what I do, just teach them enough so that they can have a better quality of life and be able to defend themselves against some bullies. Let them be able to stay calm enough under stress in the situation so they can go, you know what? I need to run. I don't need to be going toe to toe with this person. But see, when people are insecure about their fighting ability, I notice that if somebody pushes them or nudges them or tries to challenge them, they're going to feel like. I, I, I need to prove I'm a man. You don't want to be the type of person who feels forced to fight because you feel like you have to prove something to somebody because you know you don't have any type of fighting or combat sport experience. You also don't want to be somebody who's afraid to fight when you need to because you don't have any type of fighting or combat sport experience. If you have some fighting or combat sport experience or martial arts experience, it frees up the brain so that you have choice. You're used to people trying to hit at you. You're used to people trying to grab you. You're used to people being up on you. You're used to people being physically aggressive towards you so that it's not as 
alien when it happens to you for real. Now, of course, there's still going to be some people who are going to freeze. There's going to be some sort of freeze response. There's going to be some sort of panic. I still get a little bit of panic when I think something's going to happen, but it's, it's not that much. I would say where most people will have panic level 100, I probably have panic level 10 or 20, if that. Because I'm used to engaging with people physically. And nine times out of 10, well, really, 999,999 times out of a million, I'm going to pick a nonviolent response because I don't feel like I have to prove something. Okay? When you get thumped a lot, that's that's the weird dynamic about when you do a martial art or a combat sport versus people who don't. And then when you get knocked around a lot and stuff, you gotta I know with me, like you gotta go to work sore and all this other stuff. It's like, I don't wanna get into it with this person unnecessarily. You get to have to go to work sore. Or, you know, I don't wanna have to risk going to jail or going to court to have to defend against this person and all this other stuff. And you know, when I started doing it when I was a teenager. I got in less and less fights because I was just like, uh, it's just not, it's not worth it. It's not, I know I can hurt this person. I know I can beat this person up. You know, even if I get beat up, so what, you know, people get beat up all the time. Get beat up all the time in sparring. I could get beat up here. Who cares? You stop caring. It really smashes that ego down. So just because you're not a champion and you're not some kind of high-ranking, super high-ranking black belt, or maybe you're not affiliated with the hugest, biggest, largest orgs, that doesn't mean you can't pass on that wisdom to a kid, especially to a teenager or a child that might need it or some guy in their early 20s, some woman, young woman in her early 20s or something like that, or beyond people who are, you know, elderly, they need to protect themselves too, you know. Just because you're not your teacher doesn't mean you can't give what your teacher gave you to someone else. You know, I don't think Funakoshi was a champion. If you don't know who he, who he was, look it up. I don't think Jigoro Kano um, was a judo champion. He created judo. How could he have been a judo champion before he created judo? I don't think he was a jujitsu champion. I don't know if, if, if Kano Jigoro competed. Now, General Choi, he was a general. So that's one exception. But do you have to be General Choi to teach Taekwondo? Do you have to be Kano to teach Judo? Do you have to be Funakoshi to teach Karate? You just need to know more than the people who are coming to you. And a lot, you know, really, martial arts and like youth sports, it's really, to me, it's really just a cover for teaching people morality, how to handle stress and how to handle competition and how to work together, how to interact with other people. It's really just a cover for teaching morals anyway. You're just not in a pulpit. It is not in a religious context. But you're still teaching morals. You're still teaching values of fair play and things like that. You're still helping the student learn how to handle stress or helping the student have an avenue to relieve the stresses of the day-to-day -day life. People who are less stressed out tend to respond less violently, you know? And also, I know I've networked my way to some job connections through the martial arts. There's also that. So stop thinking that you have to be perfect in order to teach. Trust me, I never thought I was going to be an instructor, full or part-time, anything. I always thought it would be cool if I did, but after a while, I forgot about it, and then I got tapped. So. I'm just saying, if somebody suggests to you, hey, you know enough to teach an XYZ martial arts class, and you know you're qualified, and you know you got the time, and you know you got the health, just consider it, is all I'm saying. Don't worry about who you, who you know or who you don't know. Because one thing I've learned in this life, if you're doing the right thing, and you're starting on a good path, the other stuff starts to take care of itself. So thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please share this with people who like to talk, talk, talk about the martial arts. And if you qualify to teach, think about teaching. And peace.